Masayang buhay! Good day everyone! I'm Sir Alan Kataag and welcome once again in Extreme Science. My dear students, I hope that you are doing good and staying safe in these trying times. Let us once again enjoy learning in this week's lesson as we venture to the world of chemistry in this third grading period. Let us start our discussion by knowing the most essential learning competency that you need to master for this week. In this lesson, you are expected to explain the properties of solids, liquids, and gases based on the particle nature of matter. Before we proceed with our discussion for today, let us have first a run-through of the concepts that you have learned in chemistry in the previous years. We learned that matter takes the space and has mass. Basically, everything around us is matter, from books, ball pen, water, and the air we breathe are considered matter. So, matter really matters, right? Studying about what matter is made of involves dealing with very small particles beyond what your eyes can see. In fact, the ancient Greek philosophers proposed ideas about what matter was made of. They believed that atoms are physically but not geometrically indivisible. For Democritus, Atoms are indestructible and completely full, so there is no empty space. Both Lucipus and Democritus had the idea that there are many different kinds of atoms and each of them had specific shape and size and that all atoms move randomly around in space. However, they did not give an explanation for the motion of atoms. The idea of atom was not further explored until a little over two centuries ago when John Dalton presented concrete evidence that all matter is made up of very small particles called atoms. An atom is the smallest particle of an element that has all the properties of the element. Today, we know that although atoms are very small, they are not indivisible, as Democritus thought. Rather, they consist of still smaller particles. Democritus was right in one aspect of his belief, that is, atoms are the smallest particles of which substances are made. Atoms are the basic building block of ordinary matter that can join together to form molecules, which in turn for most of the objects around us. Scientists have discovered or created a grand total of 118 different types of atoms. Scientists have given a name to each different type of atom. A substance that is composed of only one type of atom is called an element. And that leads us to the first principle of particle nature of matter, which states that all matter is made up of particles that are incredibly small, much too small to see with the naked eye. The particles can be atoms or combinations of atoms that are bonded. Matter is made up of small particles that are too small to be seen, even in a powerful microscope. They are so small that you would have to put about 100,000 particles in a line to equal the width of a human hair. Amazing! For example, this hydrogen atom becomes the basic unit of this element which possesses the all properties of hydrogen. We defined molecules as the particles consisting of two or more atoms combined together in a specific arrangement. If this hydrogen atom is combined with another hydrogen atom, 
they will form hydrogen molecule. This hydrogen molecule can bond with different atoms like oxygen atoms. And they will eventually form a well-known compound as H2O or water. Now, it is your turn to perform your learning task for this week. Using illustrations, you will try to answer the questions that I will flash on the screen. For you to easily answer the questions, I will be showing you the symbols and the name of the elements as your clues. Let's go to question number one. What are the atoms present in illustration A? How many molecules are there in illustration A? You can pause the video for you to think of your answer. Now, what would be the answers? The molecules or the atoms that are present in illustration A are sodium, nitrogen, and oxygen. And there are two molecules present in illustration A. Let us proceed to question number two. Are there other kinds of atoms in illustration B? How many molecules are there in illustration B? Once again, I give you time to think of your answer. What would be your answer? The answer is... No, there are no other kinds of atoms present in illustration B. And how many molecules are there in illustration B? There are four. Very good. Great job. Let us go now to question number three. In illustration C, there are five molecules present. Specify each of them by writing their symbols. Once again, I will give you time to think and you can write your answers on your notebook. What will be your answer? The answer is, there are two molecules of H2O or water and three molecules of sodium chloride or salt. And for items four and five, how many atoms and molecules are there in illustration D? Explain the difference between an element and molecule. And the correct answers are, in question 4, there are 3 atoms and 1 molecule in illustration D. And in question 5, element consists of one type of atom, while molecules consist of two or more atoms that have been bonded together. Thank you for participating in our activity. The other three principles of particle nature of matter are There are forces between the particles. The particles in matter are always moving. The more energy they have, the faster they move. The spaces between the particles in matter are empty. You might assume that the spaces between particles are filled with air, but this is not the case. They contain nothing at all. Scientists find the particle model useful for two reasons. First, it provides a reasonable explanation for the behavior of matter. Second, it presents a very important idea that particles of matter are always moving. Matter that seems perfectly motionless is not motionless at all. The air you breathe, your books, your desks, and even your body all consist of particles that are in constant motion. Thus, the particle model can be used to explain the properties of solids, liquids, and gases. The particles in a solid are held together strongly. The spaces between the particles are very small. A solid has a fixed shape and a fixed volume because the particles can move only a little. The particles vibrate back and forth but remain in the fixed possessions. 
while the particles in a liquid are separated by spaces that are large enough to allow the particles to slide past each other. A liquid takes the shape of its container because the particles can move around more freely than they can in a solid. And lastly, the particles in a gas are separated by much larger spaces than the particles in a liquid or a solid. Therefore, a gas is mostly empty space. A gas always fills whatever container it is in. Since the particles are moving constantly in all directions, they spread throughout their container, no matter what volume or shape their container is. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Please refer to your learning activity sheets for the tasks to be done for weeks 1 and 2. Stay safe everyone and let's continue to learn. God bless.